Hello friends, welcome to PL SQL Performance Tuning video series. This video is a continuation of previous sets of videos where we have already discussed about what is bulk collection and what are the types of bulk collection and how bulk collection improves the performance of PL SQL code. As part of that we have seen how to use the bulk collect keyword and then how to use the for all keyword. As part of for all, whenever we do the DML operation, how to save the exceptions that is getting raised as part of that, that we have seen in the for all save exception video. As a continuation of that, in this video, we are going to understand how to use the indices of keyword. Actually, there are two keywords. One is called indices of and another is a values of. In this video, we will understand with an example how to use the indices and on what scenario we need to use the indices of keyword. And in the next video in the same series, we will try to understand how to use the values of keyword. To understand this better, I am just going to show you a very simple example. From here, we will try to understand how to use the indices of keyword. So here is a very simple program. What I have done here is that I have declared a type that is a nested table type. Then I have declared a variable of this nested table type and initialized to an empty collection. And then I have extended this variable to five memory location and I have stored five values into this variable. And using a very simple for loop, I'm just trying to iterate through this collection and inserting into this table called t underscore list. And then I have committed the changes. So by executing this data, what, what will happen is all the values from the collection will get inserted into this table that is t underscore list. After executing, if you try to select from this table, we'll be able to see all the information from this collection. First, let me execute this program. From here, we'll try to understand on what scenario we need to use the indices of keyword. So here is the simple program. Okay, I have already created a table called t underscore list. Right now the table is empty. First, let me execute this program and I will show you so that we'll understand from this collection, the for loop is able to iterate through the value and it will insert the data. So let me execute this program. Now the PL SQL program is successfully completed. Let me query from the table. As expected, all the values from this collection are iterated by the for loop and then it got inserted into this table. That's what we are seeing as part of this select statement. All right. Now instead of for, because our intention is basically to iterate through this collection and, need, and then we need to insert into this table. Instead of using for, let me just use the for all keyword so that we can do the bulk insert operation. The only usage of for all is that it will reduce the context which thereby it will improve the performance of the PL SQL code. All right. Let me use the for all. So for all in variable that is a collection variable dot first to last. Let me remove this loop keyword and end loop because this is the syntax of for all. Okay. Now let me truncate this table. The table is truncated. Let me query from the table. Yes. Right now there is no data. Let me try to execute this program again. As expected, the program is executed. Let us query from the table. Yes. As expected, all the information from this collection are inserted into this table. All right. Now the thing is, this code will work as far as the collection is a dense collection or a continuous collection. So what I mean by a dense or a continuous collection here is that that means there is no element deleted in between the collection. Okay, all the index values are continuous. That is what I mean by continuous or dense collection. So in this example, the index is a continuous. No elements are deleted in between. Suppose if any elements are deleted in, bet in between, let's assume that suppose if I'm going and deleting the third element, then what will happen is that whenever the Oracle execute this for all keyword or for all loop, it will iterate from the first element to the last element. In that situation, it will not be able to find the deleted element, then it will throw an error. Now let me show you that example. Let us, let's delete the third element. So what I'm going to do, I'm just saying collection variable dot delete of third. So what this delete function will do is it will delete the element from the third index position. Okay. Now let us try to execute the same program. So before that, let me truncate this table. Table is truncated. Now I'm trying to execute the same program after deleting the third element. Now if you see here, the program is not getting executed. Instead, it is throwing an error called element at index 3 does not exist. That is because we deleted the element at the third index position, right? So this is the problem whenever the collection is not a continuous or a not a dense collection, then we will not be able to use the for all keyword. So for all keyword will be able to use 
only if the collection is a dense collection or a continuous collection in case if it is a sparse collection that is whenever element is deleted in between the collection then we will not be able to use the for all keyword like this so instead what we need to do is that we can use the indices of keyword now let me show you how to use that indices of keyword so the syntax is for all i in we just need to say indices of the collection variable let me remove rest of the things right let me clear this log let's query from the table right now there is no data let me re-execute this program again now if you see the program is executed successfully so what this indices of keyword will do is it will iterate through the available indexes so in the, in this example the third element is deleted so what this indices of keyword will do is it will iterate through one two four and five that is only on the available index position not on the continuous index position so let me try to execute the select statement now if you have seen here in this example since the third element is deleted only a b and d got inserted into this table that is only from the first and second index position and fourth and fifth index position so that is the usage of indices of keyword so this example i have shown how to use this indices of keyword as part of the nested table let me copy and show you the same example for vra okay let me copy and put it in another window let me just bring it to right side so that we can see both the examples side by side let me truncate and select first right now there is no data here right so instead of table let's make it as v array of five okay so the rest of the things are same the only one thing is that as part of the v array data type will not be able to delete any element in between that is one of the difference which i have already covered in one of the previous video okay so let me remove this suppose if i'm not removing and if i try to execute this program this will give us an error let me show you that so now if you can see here it is giving an error called wrong number or type of argument in the call to delete because this delete function is not applicable for v array data typed variable so let me remove this line all right let me clear this let's first query from this table right now there is no information in this table let me execute this program the program is completed successfully let me query from the table now as expected all the information from this collection is inserted into this table so here is the example for v array right now let me show you an example for associative array that is as part of associative array how to use the indices of keyword let me copy the same program and i'll just put it in another window let me just bring this window to right side so that we will be able to see all the three programs in the same screen okay so now i'm just going to change this program as an associative array program is indexed by pls integer so for associative array there is no need to initialize this collection variable so let me remove same way no need to do this uh, memory extension right so let me delete this also okay so in case of associative error i don't want this associative array to be a continuous or something here so let me remove this element from the second and let me remove this line also otherwise we can even delete the information from the second and fourth index position okay let me truncate and query this table first right now there is no information so let me first execute this program as expected the program is completed successfully let me query from the table as expected the data is printing successfully so here is the program which we have just now seen so here is the example for nested table and here is the example for v array and here is the example for associative array the reason why i have shown you all the three examples are because some cases the behavior will be completely different across the different types of collection so whenever we are learning something specific to collection I would suggest you to try this across all the types of collection okay and one more thing all these three example i have showed you as part of the 19c database and from 21c there are few new enhancements available as part of the 
values of and indices of that I will cover as part of the 21c new feature video series. And one more very important thing, whenever you are working on a collection, it is very much important to understand all these three collection and the differences between all these three. To understand all the basic information with respect to the composite data type and collection, I would suggest you to watch these eight videos. These eight videos will give you all the basic information needed for you to know with respect to collection. If you have learned something new, please like this video, subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video, interview question, SQL practical question and concept videos. And if you want any questions to be answered, please post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail ID. And thanks a lot for watching this video.